right, Dad, what game are we playing today? Today, we are playing Scythe. Scythe. Yep, this monster of a game. Doesn't look awesome. What do you think about Scythe? I think it's very cool. I think this is a fantastic game. It's been much hyped, so the question is, does it live up to the hype? And I've already answered that. Yes, <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you may have heard that it got almost $2 million on its Kickstarter campaign. Well, now it's out and it's available. Uh, but we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to explain how to play it because that takes a while. And there's some pretty cool videos already about how to play it. What I want to talk about is the elements that I think are pretty cool that make this such a great game. So we'll dive into those. All right. The first thing I want to talk about is right here. This is the player mat. And this is what drives all of the actions in the game. You're going to have four segments here, and each turn you have to choose one of those to do. So right away you've got to make some choices. I know it looks pretty confusing. I won't go into the details of it, but I will tell you enough to say that on your turn you can do this top action or this bottom action or both or neither. So you'll move it to a spot, you'll do a top action or a bottom action. So for example, a few things you can do is you can increase your power level, you can produce on the hexes or the territories you control, you can move some of your characters and workers around, or you can get resources a different way. Down below, you can upgrade some of your items, which is really cool, I'll talk about in a minute. You can deploy mechs, which is cool. You can build some of your structures, and you can recruit or enlist some of your recruits, which is pretty cool. But what's neat about it, why I go into that, is because these are randomly given out at the start of the game to every player. So the actions along the bottom are the same, but you may notice there's a different cost. So here it requires to pay a certain amount of oil. This one you pay less, but you're going to pay more of the metal to deploy mechs, for example. Others are going to have different costs. The actions at the top are the same, but they're in different order on each board. So the combination between what you, your top action is and your bottom action is different from game to game. And I love the variability of that because it makes you think differently each time when you're taking your actions or you're moving around. So that's point number one of how cool it is that those combinations are random. The other random element that's handed out are the faction mats. Everybody's got a different faction. As you can see over here, I've got Bjorn and Mox. But again, the same thing. These are randomly handed out. People sit in those spots for their starting positions and they've got different abilities on each of those. So the combination of this ability plus your player mat is going to change how you do different elements of the game. And I love that combination. So each game plays out a little bit differently. The fill is the same, the rules are the same, but what you've got to think about and how you're going to accomplish it is different. I love that. But you probably ask, what's the whole objective? The objective is going to be to get the most coins and you can do that in a number of ways. First off is this item over here where your achievements are. Everybody has six stars that they begin the game with, and as they accomplish one of these achievements, they get to place their star out there. Once someone has placed all six of their stars, the game ends and you total up points. So I'll tell you in order what these are because there's elements about each of these that I really like. Obviously, you won't be able to do them all, but I'll go through uh, each in order so you can see what's cool. This first one over here is upgrades. You've got six upgrades, and I'll tell you what those are because this is one of the coolest aspects, I think, of the game. On your player mat, you've got these little cubes, and they're set in really cool. They've got a little inset that they fit in, and those are going to be upgrades. You will have one option down here that says upgrade. In this case, it costs three oil. So once I've got three oil, I can upgrade. What that means is I can take one of these cubes from the top area. Maybe I'll take one from here and then I can put it down below in any other sunken area. So for example, I could take another one from maybe from over here and place it there. So next time I go to upgrade, I'm going to only have to pay two oil, and next time I produce, I'll be able to produce on more territories. So another thing I really like are the abilities that are hidden under the mechs. Each of those are different, but one that's the same on every one is a river walk ability. You'll notice where they start out here, all starting areas really only have three territories before they come to a river. And you can't cross the river unless you've got a river walk ability. So a lot of times, that's one of the first mechs that gets placed out there. So when I build a mech, 
I put it out on the board and I can build it in a place that has one of my workers. So he constructs a mech, puts it out there. Once I have put out all four of my mechs, that's another achievement. The other is some of your structures. These are these items here. So if you build our four of those structures, you can get a star for doing that. In addition to getting that achievement done, you're gonna then get the, the benefit of what is revealed under those each time you take that action. So that's a pretty cool part. Another one here is enlist. This is another cool element of the game. That's what these four items are here. If you take the enlist action, you can then recruit one of these workers. What that does is that uncovers a benefit each time you take that action, but not just for you, the people or the faction to your left and your right are also gonna get that item when you take this action. But what you do with this recruit is you put it on your faction map and you immediately take those. So you could take more power, you could get more money, you could get more popularity, or you could get more combat cards. So if you enlist all of your recruits over here, you're gonna to get to put a star on there. The next one is the objectives. And here's another point that I think is pretty cool. During the game, as you can see, you can only complete one objective. But what you get at the start of the game are two objective cards to choose from. So you can see here, there are plenty of different objectives and you'll just put them face down. You don't have to tell anybody. You don't even have to select at the front. Depending on how the game plays out, you may accomplish one before another. So in that case, you accomplish one, you achieve that objective, and then the other one gets discarded. So I love that you don't have to choose your, your objective card at the start of the game, but you've got options as you play it out. The other items here are combat. You can get two achievements by beating combat. And another element, I love how combat works. What you have in combat, is each person involved in the combat gets a dial. So let's suppose right here, we are gonna fight over these resources. We have this faction that wants to come in. As, as this faction moves into this, there's gonna be some combat. So here's how combat works. Each player is gonna take one of these dials and they can set this dial to a number equal or less than what they have on the power track. So if red has come up to five on the power track and blue is up to three, the most blue can spend on their dial is three power and red could do five. So red could do up to five and blue could do up to three, but that's not all. This is the combat card deck and each player is going to have some combat cards in their hand during the game. You can get more of these combat cards as you go throughout. So as a player, if I have this in my hand, I can choose one combat card for each character or mech that I have. So if I have a mech and my character in there when red comes in, I could put two cards secretly in here. So what I would do without the other player seeing is I can slide these under that card and then when we're ready to reveal, we just reveal and we total that up. So I've got three plus the six that I put in there. So my nine, and if this player didn't add anything to it, is five. So in this case, blue wins. And so I would spend my three, red spent her five, and lost, and those cards are discarded. So that's a pretty cool way because there's a secret element to it. There's a visible element that everybody knows how much power you have that you could spend, but they don't know secretly what your cards are or if you're even gonna wager cards. When somebody loses a battle, they go back to their home base. If blue, for example, were to lose this, everybody comes back to their home base, including their workers, and red is now in control of those resources. So let me explain a little bit on the popularity track because this is yet another cool element of the game. What's so cool about this is this is a multiplier effect at the end of the game. These you can see the different ranges and this is going to be your final end game scoring. So if the game were to end like this, I'm going to get more points in each category than that faction is. And the categories are how many stars, that you've placed out, or how many achievements you've made times that amount, how many territories you're in control of at the end of the game times that amount, and for every two resources you have or are in the territories that you are under your control, you're gonna have that as a multiplier. So at the end of the game, you're gonna get points based off of how you're doing on popularity. So in addition to all, controlling all the other resources about your power, about your popularity, you wanna make sure that you still stay popular because that's gonna have a big impact on how you come out at the end of the game. So that's all of these elements down here. As I mentioned with combat, if you win a combat, you get an item out there. 
if you get all the way to the top of the popularity track, you're going to get to put a star there, or if you get all the way to the top of the power track. So that is the mighty cool way to go about all of these things. And I think in doing that, I've explained most of the cool things, but not all. Let me show you a couple more things that I think are really cool about the game. What we have here in the center of the board is a factory. The first time your character gets into the factory section, you get to draw a factory card. Now you don't just get to draw them randomly. There's a lot there, but each game, there's only the number of players plus one. So in a five player game, you're gonna have six cards in the factory deck. What these are going to do is they're going to allow players to add to their player map. So you'll notice the top ability and a bottom ability, the bottom ability all being the same, but I get to go through this deck, pick one that I want to do, take that and put the rest back. This is then goes to be an area where I can take an action during my turn. A couple other things to mention on here that are really cool are these little tokens here. These are the encounter cards. So when your character ends or finishes your turn there after he's moved into there, you'll remove the token and get to take an encounter. What the encounter is, it's going to show a picture that you can share with everybody and there's a theme related to it and you can read these out loud and then you get to choose what you do. So for example here you could gain some popularity or you can pay some money to get resources or you can spend some popularity to get more resources. You get to choose but all of these are different encounters. They're all themed based off of some really cool stylized artwork you can see that's going to be happening which come to mention I just love the artwork in the game so you can see they're all a big wide variety you get to choose one of those and then discard it put away so going for encounters is pretty cool too so another thing that uh, I think is really cool is even though it seems like it's mostly about building your structure upgrading yours going and getting resources there is some combat in the game but not a lot what I think is cool is the threat of combat is just as as vicious per se. So you may not think there's a lot of interaction, but you're gonna be moving based off of where other people are, whether you want to get close or not, because they could come in and take your resources, or likewise, you could be threatening them. You may not be able to expand or want to expand into an area. So even though there's a lot of things you're doing on your own, there's a lot of tension based off of where everybody else is or where you're getting a race to of who's going over what territories and how to vie control from each other. So it's a really cool aspect of the game there. So all in all, I see Scythe is a fantastic game. I really like it for a lot of the reasons I've already mentioned, but mostly because it gives you a lot of things to think about. You, it's good to have more players in the game because you can actually think more about what you're doing on your turn and, and planning for what you're going to do next and what objectives because you're limited. You can't do everything you want to do. You're going to have to move your pawn from place to place to take different actions, to build up, to get resources. So there's a lot of that control going on and it just keeps your mind clicking. So even though it's a long game, it's so seamless and engaged and there's so many different elements and different ways to victory that I think it's, it's fantastic. All right, that being said, there are a few things that I don't like about the game. The first being, it takes a long time to explain. Uh, to explain to new players, it's a good half hour to go through everything because there's going to be questions as well to go through all the other elements. But that's just the nature of the game when you've got something this big. Also, it seems like it's a slow start and a lot of similar actions being done at the start of the game. It takes a little while to get going, but then choosing what, you, what you're going to do when you get going is, is part of the draw. So... Uh, there's a little bit of, okay, first few turns we're going to be doing similar things. Uh, the good aspect of that is once people are familiar with the game, those are going to go and not take as long as, as others. So what would you rate Scythe? I would give Scythe a 4.75. I think this is a fantastic game. I like it when I'm in the mood for a good thinky long game, which is on occasion, it's not gonna be every time I reach for the game, so I'm not gonna be pulling this one out, but if I've got the right group of guys that likes to think through and figure that out and have a little bit of battle of wits on how we're maneuvering things, I think this is a fantastic game. All of those things just seem to come together seamlessly. There's enough variability, as I've already mentioned, in a lot of the objectives of, what, of what's being accomplished, your combination of your, uh, your faction map with your player board, the different powers and abilities that you're going to get with your faction, it makes you think about things differently depending on that combination that you get randomly selected at the start of the game. So there's enough that just keeps me coming back to it. So 
big thumbs up for Scythe. Excellent, thanks. Thank you.